الحمد لله رب العالمين والصلاة والسلام على نبينا محمد وعلى آله وصحبه أجمعين Brothers and sisters, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh Welcome to another episode of Know Your Prophet Now we begin with our first hadith from our chosen hadith from Shama'il al-Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam This wonderful book written by Al-Imam Abu Isa Muhammad ibn Isa ibn Sawrah ibn Musa al-Tirmidhi rahimahullahu ta'ala He said Abu Raja Qutayba ibn Sa'id informed us from Malik ibn Anas from Rabi'a ibn Abdul Rahman that he heard Anas ibn Malik radiyallahu anhu say the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was neither very tall, such that he would be clearly noticed, nor was he short. He was not extremely white, neither was he very brown. His hair was neither curly, nor completely straight. Allah commissioned him towards the end of his 40th year. This is the first hadith that we're going to study from the book Shama'il and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by Al-Imam al-Tirmidhi rahimahullahu ta'ala. And it is the hadith of Anas ibn Malik radiallahu an, first of all describing the height of the messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He said the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was neither al-tawil al-ba'in nor was he short. And the word at-tawil al-ba'in means tall such that he would tower over everybody else. And in some of the narrations it is mentioned that he was ila tuli aqrab. He was closer to being tall. So he was not of entirely medium height. He was closer to being tall, but he was not at-tawil al-ba'in. He was not so tall that he would tower head and shoulders above everybody else. So he was not unnaturally tall or excessively tall or tall so that he would stand head and shoulders above his companions. But he was closer to being tall than being short. So you would describe him sallallahu alayhi wa sallam as being tall without being excessively tall. And he was not short. And notice how Anas did not say he was not tall nor short. Anas radiallahu an said he was not excessively tall or tall such that he would be clearly noticed for his height, nor was he short. So he was tall, but not incredibly tall. And he was not short at all. So if we look at the height of men in general, you see that if somebody is approximately, let's say, six foot in height, and I'll apologize to those brothers and sisters who do things in meters, but that's how we do things where I come from. Six foot in height. Then the person who is six foot in height, this man is tall, but he's not incredibly tall. If he stood in a crowd, he wouldn't be such that his shoulder was level with everyone's head, the top of everyone's head. He would be tall in that crowd of people, and he would not be one of the short ones or one of the medium height. He would be tall, but he would not be so tall that he was like the one who is six foot six, like the tall basketball players that you see who, even if you're a tall man, the top of your head comes up to their shoulders. He wasn't like that. He wasn't six foot seven or six foot six. And again, I'm not talking about his exact height because people were of different height at that time. But I'm talking about our equivalent today. He wasn't the equivalent today of a six foot six man who is head and shoulders above everybody else. Nor is he the equivalent of a man who is five foot five who's uh, quite short in his height. Nor is he that medium height of sort of what you would call now 
you know, five, seven, five, eight, that kind of medium height that a lot of men are, and they're not tall or short. You would describe him as being tall, but not being excessively tall or extremely tall, not being the tallest person in the room or the tallest person in the town, but being tall. And this is part of the beauty that Allah Azza wa Jal gave to the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And in reality, however Allah Azza wa Jal has created you, we know that when a person is very, very tall, this isn't as liked as a person who is tall, but not excessively so. And as for a man who is short in height, this isn't as liked as a man who is tall in height. So in terms of characteristics, the most perfect is a man who is tall without being excessively tall. Not so tall as to appear outlandish or to appear like everybody notices their height and everybody looks up in the air at them. And not a person who you would describe as being short or of just regular height. Tall, but not excessively so. And this is the perfection of the physical attribute of the Prophet He was not extremely white, neither was he very brown. The Prophet had white skin. But his skin was not so white as you would describe it to be purely white. In some of the ahadith of the Prophet wasallam, it is mentioned as white with a reddish tinge, a reddish color to it. And in some, it is described as being a very light brown. What does this mean about the skin of the Prophet You have people who are very, very, very white, such that their skin is pure white in color, and it doesn't have any tinge of color in it. And of course, you have people who have very dark color skin, such that there is no way you could describe any whiteness in it at all. And then there is a person who you would describe as being white but tanned, or white with olive skin. They are light skin in tone, lighter than most of the Arabs at that time, but they are not so light as to be completely white in skin and completely absent of any color. Rather, they are a degree nearer to having color in their skin while still being described as white. And this is how Anas radiallahu an described the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa is described in many of the ahadith that he was white with a reddish color or white with a brownish tinge or that he was neither completely white nor was he completely brown and all of these colors are very similar in color we're talking about the color that is like olive skin or the color that is white with a strong tinge of color to it or someone that is white with a quite a deep red or a, a light brown color to their skin which gives it a tone this is like the skin of the Prophet so he was neither extremely white such as we're talking about white without any color in their skin nor was he very brown. His skin wasn't described as being brown in color or black in color. It was white in color, but it had a tinge of brown in it. It had a degree of brown in it or a degree of red in it. And we're talking somewhere around what people term olive skin or perhaps a little bit lighter than that. Something where we are talking about white skin that has been tanned or has a color to it that gives it a deeper color than being extremely white without being called brown. And this was the color of the skin of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam.
And again, we see the perfection in the color of the skin of the Prophet And just reflecting upon the world today, not in every place, but in a lot of places, people who have extremely fair skin, what do they do? They go on holiday and lie in the sun so that they can get some color in their skin. True or not? And those people who come from cultures that have a darker skin tone, a lot of those cultures, when they look to get married, what do they praise in a person's skin quality? They're fair, right? That you should marry a fair girl, a girl who's a bit fairer than the normal skin tone. And this is how Allah Azza wa Jal gave the Prophet Sallallahu the best of physical attributes. So his skin was not the kind of white that people say, oh, my skin is too white, I need to get it tanned. Nor was it the kind of brown that people say you should praise the characteristics of the person who has skin that is a bit fairer. It was in the middle, and that is the beauty of the Prophet Sallallahu And after the break, we'll continue with this hadith of Anas, radiallahu an. Until then, assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. ادعوا إلى سبيل ربك بالحكمة والموعظة الحسنة وجادلهم بالتي هي أحسن Call to the way of your Lord with wisdom and beautiful preaching and argue and reason with them with that which is best I am Abdul Bari Yahya Join me for the art of da'wah. Join Abdul Bari Yahya in Art of Da'wah every Sunday at 5 p.m. UK and 6 p.m. Europe on Peace TV. Where truth is hidden, misleading quotations create confusion. Where truth is hidden, lack of knowledge and wisdom cause upheaval and commotion. Where truth is hidden, manipulate scriptures and twisted facts emerge. This very hidden truth creates false propaganda, mayhem, chaos, disorder, and turmoil in our lives and the world order. But is there anyone with courage and wisdom? What is the truth and who has the courage to expose it? Because it's your right to know the truth. Watch Truth Prevail and Lies Perish in Truth Exposed by Dr. Zakir Naik every Sunday to Friday at 9 p.m. UK and 10 p.m. Europe on Peace TV. Oh. We are not addicted to Dawah. Addiction implies a short-term fix. One doesn't need to get into the zone to talk about Islam. You do dawah because it is a natural result of your commitment to Allah. If you don't talk, people are going to walk. most effective combination in the propagation of true Islam is found in Dawah Ilullah. Join me, Arib Islam, as we go through Dawah Ilullah only on Peace TV. Follow the tips to make the task of Dawah result-oriented in Dawah Ilallah, next on Peace TV. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Welcome back. We're talking about the hadith of Anas radiallahu an, the Messenger of Allah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, was neither very tall such that he would be clearly noticed, nor was he short. And he was not extremely white, neither was he very brown. And we said that this is the most praiseworthy physical attribute in a person. And Allah Azza wa Jal gave the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam the best physical attributes. 
And that doesn't take away from someone who's short, nor does it take away from someone who has extremely white skin or extremely dark skin. Because Allah Azza wa Jal created all of us differently. But Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gave the Prophet sallallahu a beauty that struck everyone who met him. His hair was neither very curly nor completely straight. His hair did not have lots of curls in so that you would say he had curly hair. Nor was his hair completely straight as though you took some hair straighteners to it. It is said in some other hadith that his hair had a wave in it, a natural wave. And there's no doubt that this is the most beautiful of hair in a man. The most beautiful of hair in a man is not the hair that is excessively curly, nor the hair that is completely straight as though it has been straightened with a hair tongue, but hair that has a natural wave to it and is somewhere in between. And then Anas radiallahu anhu says, Allah commissioned him toward the end of his 40th year. He remained in Mecca for 10 years and in Medina for 10 years and Allah caused him to pass away at the turn of his 60th year. Now, this leaves us with a confusion because this is an authentic hadith from Anas radiallahu anhu. It's an authentic hadith. But the issue here is that the Prophet sallallahu did not remain in Mecca for 10 years. He remained for 13 and in Medina for 10 years. And he passed away at the turn of his 63rd year, not at the turn of his 60th year. So why did Anas mention 10 years and 10 years? The ulama, the scholars of hadith, they mention a number of potential reasons for this. But perhaps the most common is that there is a common way of speaking in Arabic of just removing the remainder and talking in generalities. So if someone lived for 11 years, they would say he lived for 10 years. And if someone worked for 12 years, they would say he worked for 10 years. Just simply talking in general terms. And it is said this way that Anas radiallahu anhu was speaking. And we know that Anas was from the younger companions who met with the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in Medina. And that the length of his time in Mecca is well documented in the authentic hadith. And so we say that Anas was simply generalizing the statement, removing the remainder or generalizing the statement when he said that the Prophet ﷺ spent 10 years in Mecca. We go on to the next hadith. The hadith from Anas radiallahu an, that he said that the Prophet ﷺ was of medium stature neither tall nor short of a goodly build. His hair was neither curly nor completely straight. He had a brownish complexion, and when he walked, he leant forward, walking briskly. So this gives us a little bit more information. It says the Prophet ﷺ was of medium stature, as we know, and we said he was taller than medium. Because in some of the wordings it says, وَكَانَ إِلَى طُولِ أَقْرَبِ He was closer to being taller. So he was tall without being excessively tall or of a medium kind of being tall. And he was neither tall, i.e. neither excessively tall because Anas explained in the previous hadith, that the meaning here of tall was not that he was not tall at all, but that he was not excessively tall, nor short, and of a goodly build. And this describes the build of the Prophet ﷺ. He was not, as is narrated in some of the hadith, huge in his build. You know, like a great big giant, you know, huge in his build. Like is mentioned about some of the companions, that they were huge in their build. Nor was he skinny in his build and very thin. He was of the perfect build. And this will come later on, that the Prophet ﷺ was of the perfect build. He was not larger than would be desirable, nor was he 
smaller or thinner than would be desirable. He was incredibly strong, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. Allah Azza wa Jal gave him a strength that he did not give to anyone else. And that is why you see that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in the battle of Al-Ahzab broke the rock that two companions could not manage to remove it. And he was able to do so sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And he was stronger than any of the companions sallallahu wa sallam who alayhi. But he was not incredibly bulky. That you would say that he had a huge frame or a great bulky sort of large frame. Nor was he skinny. So you would say he's a very thin, very sort of weak sort of person. But he was in between. So Allah Azza wa Jal, in his height, in his skin color, in his hair, and in his build, gave him a middle characteristic. A medium characteristic, closer to that which is more desirable. So it was not bang in the middle, that his skin color was exactly halfway between white and black. Rather, it was white with a brownish tinge. And his height was not exactly in the middle, so that if you added up all of the heights of the companions and took an average, that it would be dead in the middle. But he was closer to being tall than to being exactly in the middle. And his hair was neither excessively curly nor straight, but it had a wave in it. So it had some sort of wave in it, a natural wave in his hair, sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And in his build, he was not incredibly bulky of a large and huge frame, nor was he incredibly skinny and frail. He was of a goodly build, strong, incredibly powerful, but not so huge and bulky as sometimes the most powerful and strong people are. He had a brownish complexion. And his complexion is explained in the other hadith, the meaning of brownish, that they all come together, is that he was white with a tinge of brown or at the very lightest shade of brown. And that's the meaning of brownish, that at the very lightest shade of brown or the color of white when it is tanned. So like we said, something like olive skin or perhaps a little lighter than that somewhere around that kind of color. And when he walked, he leant forward. He leant forward walking briskly. And we're going to hear about the walking of the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam that he used to walk extremely quickly as though he was descending a slope. He would lean forward and walk very, very quickly Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. And this is for a number of reasons. From the reasons for this is that it showed his power and his physical strength and his presence that he would walk very quickly and lean forward and showing the power that he had in his legs, the power that he had to be able to drive him forward when he was walking. And it's mentioned that the other companions had to rush to keep up with him. And also because this is the description of a person who has a purpose, the person who walks with a purpose, not the person who strolls around from place to place, idly wondering, shall I go left or shall I go right or shall I turn back? But the walk of a person who has a purpose and an aim and a goal, a fast, determined, powerful walk. That is how the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi alayhi used to walk. Insha'Allah Ta'ala in the next episode, we're going to continue with the physical description of the Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam and looking at some of the other hadith in the first chapter of Shama'il and Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam by Imam al-Tirmidhi rahimahullahu ta'ala describing those physical characteristics of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and how he used to look and how he used to be in that regard. Until then, I leave you in the care of Allah. Wassalamu alaykum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Oh.